Hello, fictional. Welcome to the crossover What Ifs. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto got a harem with Millie, Luna, and Octavia. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Naruto Uzumaki raced across the rooftops of Konoha, his bright orange jumpsuit a blur against the evening sky. The village was calm, the sun setting in a wash of reds and oranges. It had been a long day of training, and Naruto was looking forward to a hot bowl of ramen at Ichiraku. As he leaped from one building to another, something caught his eye in the distance. A strange, swirling vortex of dark energy hovered in the air just beyond the village gates. What the hell is that? Naruto muttered to himself, changing direction and heading toward the anomaly. His curiosity peaked, he landed softly on the ground, eyes fixed on the swirling mass. The vortex pulsed with an eerie light, growing larger with each passing second. Naruto felt a strange pull, as if it were beckoning him. He hesitated for a moment, but his adventure spirit and sense of duty won out. Stealing himself, he took a deep breath and stepped into the vortex. Instantly, he was engulfed in darkness. The sensation of falling overtook him, and he spun through a tunnel of swirling energy. His stomach lurched, and he clenched his fists, ready for whatever lay ahead. After what felt like an eternity, the darkness receded, and Naruto found himself standing on solid ground. He looked around, blinking in confusion. The landscape was unlike anything he had ever seen. Jagged rocks jutted out of the ground, twisted and blackened as if scorched by fire. The sky was a deep foreboding red, streaked with dark clouds. Strange, otherworldly plants and trees dotted the terrain, their twisted forms adding to the unsettling atmosphere. Where am I? Naruto whispered, taking a cautious step forward. The air was thick with a sulfurous smell, and a heavy sense of dread settled over him. Before he could take another step, a low growl echoed through the air. Naruto spun around, kunai in hand, just as a massive demonic creature lunged at him. It was covered in scales, with glowing red eyes and sharp claws. Naruto dodged to the side, narrowly avoiding its attack. Shadow clone jutsu. He shouted, forming the hand signs. Instantly, multiple copies of himself appeared, surrounding the creature. The clones attacked in unison, but the demon swatted them away with ease, its claws slicing through them like butter. Naruto gritted his teeth, summoning his chakra. Rasengan. He charged at the demon, the swirling ball of energy in his hand. Just as he was about to strike, a figure leaped into the fray, slashing at the demon with a pair of deadly scythes. Lily, watch out. Another voice called. A large wolf-like creature with a punk rock appearance barreled into the demon, knocking it off balance. Naruto blinked in surprise as the two figures fought the demon with precision and skill. The one called Millie was a short fierce woman with red skin and black hair, her sides moving in a deadly dance. The wolf-like creature, who he assumed was Luna, snarled and clawed at the demon with ferocity. Who are these people? Naruto wondered aloud, watching the battle unfold. He didn't have much time to ponder, as the demon roared and lashed out, catching Millie off guard. Hold on. Naruto shouted, charging forward. He leaped into the air, Rasengan at the ready, and slammed it into the demon's side. The creature howled in pain, stumbling back. Nice move. Millie called out, giving him a thumbs up. Let's finish this. Naruto nodded, forming more shadow clones to distract the demon. Millie and Luna moved in, attacking with swift coordinated strikes. The demon faltered under their combined assault, finally collapsing in a heap. Panting, Naruto dispelled his clones and turned to face his unexpected allies. Thanks for the help, he said, offering a smile. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, by the way. Millie, the red-skinned woman replied, sheathing her sides. And this is Luna. Luna gave a curt nod, her yellow eyes studying him intently. What are you doing here, human? She asked, her tone gruff. Naruto scratched the back of his head, looking around. I honestly don't know. I was in Konoha, and then this weird portal showed up. Next thing I knew, I was here. Millie exchanged a glance with Luna. You're in hell, she said matter off factly And it's not exactly a place for humans. Great, Naruto muttered, rubbing his temples. Any idea how I can get back? Maybe Octavia can help, Luna suggested. She's got some knowledge about portals and stuff. Millie nodded. Good idea. Come on, Naruto. We'll take you to her. Naruto followed them through the strange twisted landscape, his mind racing. He had no idea how he had ended up in hell or how he was going to get back to Konoha. But for now, he was grateful for the unexpected allies he had found. As they walked, Millie and Luna explained a bit about their world and their work as part of the Haluva boss crew. Naruto listened intently, intrigued by their stories. Despite the eerie surroundings, he felt a sense of excitement. This was a new adventure, and he was determined to see it through. Soon, they arrived at a large, ornate building. Millie led the way inside, calling out for Octavia. A tall elegant girl with black feathers and a somber expression appeared, her eyes widening in surprise when she saw Naruto. Who's this? 
she asked, her voice soft but curious. Long story, Millie said with a grin. But we need your help to get him back to his world. Octavia studied Naruto for a moment, then nodded. I'll see what I can do. As they began discussing the details, Naruto couldn't help but feel a spark of hope. With Millie, Luna, and Octavia by his side, he was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. This was just the beginning of an adventure unlike any other. Naruto sat in a plush, albeit gothic, chair in Octavia's living room, feeling out of place. The room was decorated with dark ornate furniture, and strange artifacts lined the shelves. Millie, Luna, and Octavia stood nearby, discussing potential ways to get Naruto back to Konoha. So, what exactly is this place? Naruto asked, breaking the silence. I mean, I get that it's hell, but it's different from what I imagined. Millie chuckled. Yeah, it's not all fire and brimstone. Hell's got its different regions, just like your world. We're in the pride ring right now. It's where a lot of the upper class demons live. Luna nodded. It's also where we run our business, IMP immediate murder professionals. We handle assassination contracts. Naruto blinked in surprise. Assassins. That's intense. Yeah, it pays the bills, Luna replied with a smirk. But enough about us. We need to figure out how to get you home. Octavia stepped forward, holding an ancient-looking book. I've been researching portal spells. It's complex, but we might be able to create a temporary rift that leads back to your world. It'll take some time and the right materials. Naruto nodded, grateful for their help. Thanks Octavia. I appreciate it. Lily grinned. No problem. In the meantime, why don't you stay with us? We can show you around, and you might even have some fun. Naruto hesitated for a moment, but then smiled. Sure, why not? I've always been up for an adventure. The group decided to start with a tour of the Pride Ring. Naruto followed Millie, Luna, and Octavia through the bustling streets, taking in the sights and sounds of hell. The architecture was a mix of grandiose and macabre, with towering buildings and intricate designs. Demons of all shapes and sizes went about their business, some casting curious glances at the human among them. As they walked, Naruto noticed how the dynamic between the three girls played out. Millie was cheerful and enthusiastic, her energy infectious. Luna, though more reserved, had a sharp wit and a protective streak. Octavia, on the other hand, was calm and collected, her intelligence evident in her every word. They stopped at a bustling marketplace, filled with stalls selling a variety of bizarre goods. Millie led Naruto to a food stall, where they bought some snacks that looked strange but tasted surprisingly good. Try this, Millie said, handing Naruto a skewer of grilled meat. It's a hell specialty. Naruto took a bite, his eyes widening in delight. This is amazing. Luna smirked. Told you hell isn't all bad. As they continued their tour, Naruto began to feel more at ease. The initial shock of being in hell was fading, replaced by a sense of curiosity and adventure. He found himself laughing at Millie's jokes, exchanging banter with Luna, and having thoughtful conversations with Octavia. After a while, they reached a secluded park, a rare peaceful spot in the bustling city. They sat on a bench, enjoying the tranquility. So, Naruto, Octavia began, tell us more about your world. What's it like being a ninja? Naruto smiled, launching into stories of his adventures in Konoha, his training, and his friends. The girls listened intently, fascinated by his tales of courage and camaraderie. As he spoke, Naruto felt a sense of connection forming between them, a bond forged through shared experiences and mutual respect. The sun or whatever passed for a sun in hell began to set, casting a reddish glow over the landscape. Millie stood up, stretching. We should head back. We've got work tomorrow, and you, Naruto, should get some rest. Naruto nodded, feeling a wave of fatigue wash over him. It had been a long, eventful day. They made their way back to Octavia's home, where Naruto was shown to a guest room. Thanks for everything, he said, looking at the three girls. I didn't expect to find friends here. Millie beamed. We're glad to have you, Naruto. Luna nodded. Yeah, you're not so bad for a human. Octavia smiled softly. Good night, Naruto. Naruto lay down on the surprisingly comfortable bed, his mind racing with thoughts of the day. Despite the strange circumstances, he felt a sense of excitement. This was a new adventure, and he was determined to see it through. As he drifted off to sleep, he thought about Millie's infectious energy, Luna's sharp wit, and Octavia's calm intelligence. They were an unusual group, but somehow, it felt right. He didn't know what the future held, but for the first time in a long time, he felt a sense of belonging. The next morning, Naruto woke to the sound of soft knocking on his door. He groggily opened his eyes, stretching as he sat up. Millie's cheerful face peeked through the door. Morning, Naruto. Breakfast is ready, and we've got a big day ahead, she said with a bright smile. Naruto rubbed his eyes and nodded. Be right there. He quickly got dressed and made his way to the dining area, where Luna and Octavia were already seated, eating what looked like a mix of familiar and otherworldly food. 
Morning, Naruto greeted, taking a seat. He piled his plate with various foods, eager to try everything. To his surprise, the meal was delicious, and he felt his energy returning with every bite. So, what's on the agenda for today? He asked between mouthfuls. Lily grinned. Well, since you're a ninja, we thought we'd train together. It's not every day we get to spar with someone from another world. Naruto's eyes lit up at the prospect. That sounds awesome. I'm in. After breakfast, they headed to an open training ground. It was a vast area surrounded by jagged rocks and twisted trees, the perfect place for a sparring session. Millie, Luna, and Octavia stood in a line, ready to begin. Let's start with some basic warm-ups, Octavia suggested. They went through a series of stretches and exercises, preparing their bodies for the upcoming session. Once they were warmed up, Millie stepped forward, twirling her scythes. Okay, Naruto, show us what you've got. Naruto grinned, forming the hand signs for his signature jutsu. Shadow clone jutsu. Instantly, multiple copies of himself appeared, surrounding Millie. They attacked in unison, but Millie deftly dodged and countered, her scythes moving in a blur. Naruto watched, impressed by her agility and skill. He formed a Rasengan and charged, aiming for an opening. Millie met his attack head-on, blocking with her scythes and pushing him back. Not bad, she said with a grin. But you'll have to do better than that. Next, it was Luna's turn. She transformed into her full demonic form, towering over Naruto with her sharp claws and fierce eyes. She lunged at him, her movement swift and powerful. Naruto dodged and countered, using his clones to distract her while he looked for an opening. They're quick, Luna admitted, her tone begrudgingly respectful. But can you keep up with this? She unleashed a flurry of attacks, forcing Naruto to think on his feet. Naruto's clones worked in perfect sync, creating a diversion while he prepared another Rasengan. With precise timing, he struck, landing a solid hit on Luna's side. She stumbled back, shaking her head. Impressive, she said, a hint of a smile on her lips. But don't get beepy. Finally, it was Octavia's turn. Unlike Millie and Luna, she used her intelligence and strategic thinking to outmaneuver Naruto. She summoned dark energy, creating barriers and traps to keep him on his toes. Naruto found himself caught in a web of dark tendrils, struggling to break free. He focused his chakra, using a combination of strength and agility to escape. Octavia watched, her eyes calculating. You're resourceful, she observed. But how will you handle this? She summoned a dark vortex, similar to the one that had brought him to hell. Naruto's heart raced as he faced the swirling energy. He knew he had to think fast. Drawing on his training and instincts, he formed a plan. Using his clones as a distraction, he launched himself into the air, aiming for Octavia. She was caught off guard, her eyes widening as Naruto closed the distance. At the last moment, he shifted his trajectory, landing beside her and dispelling the vortex with a well-placed Rasengan. Octavia nodded in approval. Well done, Naruto. You've got potential. The training session continued for hours, each combatant pushing their limits and learning from one another. By the end, they were all exhausted but exhilarated. Naruto felt a deep sense of satisfaction, knowing he had given his all. As they rested, Millie handed Naruto a water bottle. You did great today. I can see why you're such a legendary ninja. Naruto smiled, taking a long drink. Thanks Millie. You guys are pretty amazing too. Luna smirked. Not bad for a human, Yuzumaki. Octavia sat beside him, her expression thoughtful. You've adapted well to our world. It's not easy to face the unknown and come out on top. Naruto nodded, feeling a sense of camaraderie with his new friends. I guess it's all about finding common ground and working together, no matter where we come from. As the sun set over the training ground, they made their way back to Octavia's home, tired but happy. Naruto knew there were still many challenges ahead, but he was ready to face them with his newfound allies. The following day, Naruto woke up feeling refreshed and ready for whatever challenges lay ahead. As he made his way to the dining area, he found Millie, Luna, and Octavia already deep in conversation. Morning, Naruto. Millie greeted cheerfully. We've got some news. Naruto raised an eyebrow, intrigued. What's up? Luna leaned back in her chair, a sly smile on her face. We've got a mission. And we could use your help. Naruto's interest peaked. A mission. What kind of mission? Octavia unfolded a map on the table, pointing to a specific location. There's been a disturbance in one of the outer rings of hell. Some rogue demons are causing chaos, and it's affecting our business. We need to take care of it. Naruto nodded, understanding the gravity of the situation. All right, I'm in. What's the plan? Millie explained, her tone serious. We'll need to gather some intel first. Luna, you and I will handle that part. Naruto, you'll team up with Octavia to scout the area. Once we have enough information, we'll regroup and come up with a strategy. Naruto glanced at Octavia, who nodded in agreement. Sounds good. Let's do this. They quickly finished breakfast and gathered their gear. 
Naruto and Octavia set off towards the outer ring, moving swiftly through the bustling streets of the Pride Ring. As they traveled, Naruto couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement. This was his first real mission in Hell, and he was eager to prove himself. After a few hours of traveling, they reached the border of the outer ring. The atmosphere was noticeably different, with the air thickening with tension. The buildings were more dilapidated, and the demons they encountered seemed more hostile. We need to be careful, Octavia whispered, her eyes scanning their surroundings. This area is known for its unpredictability. Naruto nodded, his senses on high alert. Got it. Let's stick to the plan. They moved stealthily through the shadows, avoiding detection as they scouted the area. Naruto used his ninja skills to blend in, while Octavia's keen observation skills helped them gather valuable information. As they navigated the treacherous terrain, they overheard snippets of conversation from the rogue demons. It became clear that the situation was more dire than they had initially thought. The rogue demons were planning a large-scale attack on the pride ring, and they needed to act fast to prevent it. We need to get back and warn the others, Naruto said urgently. Octavia nodded in agreement. Let's go. They retraced their steps, moving quickly but cautiously. By the time they reached the rendezvous point, Millie and Luna were already waiting, their expressions serious. We've got trouble, Naruto said, catching his breath. The rogue demons are planning an attack on the pride ring. We need to stop them. Millie's eyes widened in alarm. We need to act fast. Luna, what did you find? Luna's expression was grim. They've got a well-fortified base and a lot of manpower. It won't be easy to take them down. Octavia spread out the map, marking key locations. We need a plan. We can't go in blindly. They huddled together, strategizing and pooling their knowledge. Naruto suggested a diversion tactic, using his shadow clones to create confusion, while the others infiltrated the base. Millie and Luna would handle the front line, while Octavia and Naruto would target the leaders. Once the plan was set, they prepared for the mission. Naruto created multiple shadow clones, sending them in different directions to create a distraction. The rogue demons took the bait, spreading out to chase the clones. Millie and Luna charged in, their weapons at the ready. They fought with precision and ferocity, cutting through the ranks of demons with ease. Naruto and Octavia used the chaos to slip into the base, moving swiftly towards their targets. As they approached the central chamber, they encountered the leaders of the rogue demons. A fierce battle ensued, with Naruto and Octavia working in perfect sync. Naruto's Rasengan clashed with dark energy, while Octavia used her powers to create barriers and traps. Despite the overwhelming odds, they fought with determination and skill. Slowly but surely, they gained the upper hand. Naruto delivered a powerful blow, taking down the main leader, while Octavia incapacitated the remaining ones. But the leaders defeated, the remaining rogue demons scattered, their morale shattered. The mission was a success. As they regrouped, Millie clapped Naruto on the back, grinning from ear to ear. You did great, Naruto. We couldn't have done it without you. Luna nodded in agreement. Yeah, you're not so bad after all. Octavia smiled, her eyes reflecting her admiration. You were amazing, Naruto. Thank you. Naruto felt a sense of pride and accomplishment. He had proven himself and earned the respect of his new friends. As they made their way back to the pride ring, he knew that this was just the beginning of their adventures together. The following morning, Naruto, Millie, Luna and Octavia gathered around the dining table once more. The aftermath of their successful mission left them feeling accomplished, but there was an underlying tension in the air. The job yesterday, everyone, Millie began, her voice steady. But I can't shake off the feeling that there's more to this than we know. Luna nodded. I agree. The rogue demons seem too organized. There's gotta be someone pulling the strings. Octavia unfolded the map again, pointing to the location of the rogue demon's base. We need to find out who's behind this and why. If they're planning more attacks, we need to be prepared. Naruto looked at his friends, determination in his eyes. Then let's investigate. We need to gather more intel and find out who's behind this. They spent the morning planning their next move. It was decided that Naruto and Millie would head back to the rogue demon's base to search for clues, while Luna and Octavia would stay behind to keep an eye on the pride ring and gather information from their contacts. As they prepared to leave, Luna handed Naruto a small communicator. Keep in touch. If you find anything, let us know immediately. Naruto nodded, pocketing the device. Got it. We'll be careful. Naruto and Millie set off towards the outer ring once more, moving swiftly through the desolate landscape. The air was thick with tension, but Naruto felt a sense of purpose driving him forward. When they reached the ruins of the rogue demon's base, they found it eerily quiet. The aftermath of the battle was evident, with debris scattered everywhere and the lingering scent of smoke in the air. We need to be thorough, Millie said, her eyes scanning the area. Look for anything that might give us a clue about their leader. They split up, carefully searching through the rubble. 
Naruto used his shadow clones to cover more ground, while Millie moved with practiced precision, her keen eyes catching even the smallest details. After several hours of searching, Naruto stumbled upon a hidden compartment in the floor. He pried it open, revealing a stash of documents and maps. Millie, I think I found something. Millie hurried over, her eyes widening as she saw the hidden stash. Good job, Naruto. Let's take a look. They sifted through the documents, piecing together bits of information. It became clear that the rogue demons were part of a larger organization, one that had its sights set on disrupting the balance of power in hell. This is bad, Millie said, her voice tinged with worry. If they're this organized, it means there's someone powerful backing them. Naruto nodded, his expression serious. We need to get this information back to Octavia and Luna. They need to see this. They carefully packed up the documents and maps, making their way back to the Pride Ring. As they traveled, Naruto couldn't shake off the feeling that they were being watched. He glanced around, but saw nothing out of the ordinary. When they finally reached Octavia's home, they were greeted with relief and concern. Did you find anything? Octavia asked, her eyes filled with worry. Naruto and Millie spread out the documents on the table, explaining what they had found. Luna's eyes darkened as she read through the information. This is worse than we thought. We need to act fast. Octavia nodded in agreement. We need to find out who's behind this organization and stop them before they can launch another attack. Naruto looked at his friends, determination burning in his eyes. Then let's do it. We've already proven we can work together. Now we just need to take it to the next level. They spent the rest of the evening planning their next move. They decided to split up again, with Naruto and Millie heading to a nearby town to gather more information, while Luna and Octavia would stay behind to coordinate their efforts and keep an eye on any suspicious activity. As they prepared to leave, Octavia placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder. Be careful, Naruto. We're up against something powerful. But I believe in us. Naruto nodded, feeling a sense of camaraderie and purpose. We'll be careful and we'll find out who's behind this. With their plan in place, Naruto and Millie set off towards the town, determined to uncover the truth. As they traveled, Naruto couldn't help but feel a sense of anticipation. They were getting closer to the heart of the mystery, and he knew that whatever lay ahead, they would face it together. Naruto and Millie traveled through the winding paths leading to the nearby town, a place known for its bustling trade and colorful inhabitants. As they approached the town's entrance, they were greeted by the sight of towering buildings and busy streets filled with all kinds of demons and creatures. We need to be discreet, Millie whispered, her eyes scanning the crowd. We don't want to draw any unnecessary attention. Naruto nodded in agreement. Got it. Let's find a place to gather information. They navigated through the crowded streets, blending in with the hustle and bustle of the town. After a while, they found a small tavern on the edge of the market square. It was the kind of place where information flowed freely and secrets were exchanged for the right price. As they entered the tavern, they were met with the smell of ale and the sound of lively chatter. Naruto and Millie took a seat at a corner table, keeping their ears open for any useful information. The grizzled demon bartender approached them, eyeing them suspiciously. What can I get you? Naruto smiled, trying to appear casual. Just some drinks, please. And maybe some information if you have any. The bartender's eyes narrowed, but he nodded and went to fetch their drinks. Millie leaned in closer to Naruto, whispering, we need to be careful. This place is full of spies and informants. Naruto nodded, his senses on high alert. We'll keep our guard up. As they waited for their drinks, they listened to the conversations around them. It didn't take long before they overheard a group of demons talking about the recent disturbances in the outer ring. I heard it was a bunch of rogue demons, one of them said, his voice low. Causing trouble for everyone. Yeah, but there's more to it, another demon replied. Word is, they're being backed by someone powerful. Someone with big plans. Naruto and Millie exchanged a glance, their suspicions confirmed. They needed to find out who this powerful backer was. The bartender returned with their drinks, setting them down on the table. Anything else I can help you with? Naruto leaned in, his voice low. We're looking for information about the recent disturbances in the outer ring. Heard anything useful? The bartender studied them for a moment before nodding. I might have heard a thing or two. But information isn't free. Millie reached into her pocket, pulling out a small bag of coins. Will this do? The bartender's eyes gleamed as he took the bag, pocketing it quickly. All right. There's been talk of a powerful demon pulling the strings. Someone who goes by the name of Asmodeus. He's got a lot of influence and resources, and he's been recruiting rogue demons to do his dirty work. Naruto's eyes widened in recognition. Asmodeus. He's one of the high-ranking demons, right? The bartender nodded. That's right. And if he's involved, it means big trouble. You'd best be careful poking around in his business. Millie thanked the bartender, and they finished their drinks quickly, eager to relay the information back to the others. 
As they left the tavern, Naruto couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. He glanced around, but saw nothing out of the ordinary. We need to get back to Octavia and Luna, Millie said, her voice urgent. They need to know about Asmodeus. They made their way back to the pride ring, moving swiftly through the shadows. When they finally reached Octavia's home, they were greeted with relief. Did you find anything? Luna asked, her eyes filled with concern. Naruto and Millie shared what they had learned, explaining the involvement of Asmodeus and his plans to disrupt the balance of power in hell. Octavia's eyes widened in alarm. This is worse than we thought. Asmodeus is extremely powerful. We need to be very careful. Luna nodded, her expression serious. We need to come up with a plan to stop him. But we can't do it alone. Naruto looked at his friends, determination burning in his eyes. Then we find allies. We gather as much support as we can and take the fight to Asmodeus. We can't let him succeed. Millie placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder, a reassuring smile on her face. We've got your back, Naruto. We'll do this together. Octavia nodded in agreement. We're in this together. We'll find a way to stop Asmodeus and protect the pride ring. But their resolve strengthened, they began planning their next move. They needed to gather allies, gather more information, and prepare for the battle ahead. As they strategized late into the night, Naruto couldn't help but feel a sense of hope. They were up against a powerful enemy, but with his friends by his side, he knew they could overcome anything. The next morning, Naruto, Millie, Luna and Octavia gathered around the table, reviewing their plans. The revelation about Asmodeus had shaken them, but it also fueled their determination to stop him. We need allies Octavia stated, her eyes scanning the map spread out before them. We can't take on Asmodeus alone. We need to find others who are willing to stand with us. Millie nodded. There are plenty of demons who don't agree with Asmodeus's methods. We just need to find them and convince them to join us. Naruto clenched his fists, determination burning in his eyes. Then let's get started. The sooner we gather our allies, the better. They split into pairs to cover more ground. Naruto and Millie would head to the western outskirts, known for its independent clans and warriors, while Luna and Octavia would visit the central market, a hub of information and potential recruits. As Naruto and Millie made their way to the western outskirts, they encountered a series of small settlements and independent groups. The first group they approached was a clan of fierce warriors known for their combat skills and loyalty to their own. Naruto stepped forward, addressing the clan leader, a tall demon with sharp features and a commanding presence. We're here to ask for your help. Asmodeus is planning something big, and we need all the support we can get to stop him. The clan leader studied Naruto for a moment before nodding. We've heard rumors about Asmodeus's plans. If what you say is true, then we can't afford to sit idly by. We'll join you. But the first ally secured, Naruto and Millie continued their journey, visiting other clans and independent warriors. They encountered resistance and skepticism, but Naruto's determination and Millie's persuasive skills eventually won over many of them. By the time they returned to the Pride Ring, they had gathered a small but formidable group of allies. Naruto felt a sense of accomplishment, but he knew their work was far from over. Back at Octavia's home, Luna and Octavia were waiting for them, having also secured a few potential recruits from the Central Market. They gathered around the table, reviewing their progress. We've made a good start Octavia said, her voice filled with hope. But we need more. Asmodeus is powerful, and we can't underestimate him. Luna nodded. We need to keep pushing. We need to find more allies and gather more information about Asmodeus's plans. Naruto looked at his friends, his resolve unwavering. Then let's keep going. We're getting closer to stopping him, and we can't give up now. The next few days were a whirlwind of activity as they continued their search for allies. They traveled to different parts of the Pride Ring, meeting with various groups and individuals who might be willing to join their cause. Some were eager to help, while others needed more convincing. One evening, as they returned from another successful recruitment trip, Naruto and Millie were approached by a mysterious figure cloaked in shadows. The figure's voice was low and raspy. I hear you're looking for allies to stop Asmodeus. Naruto stepped forward, his senses on high alert. That's right. Who are you? The figure revealed themselves to be a demon known as Azazel, a former high-ranking member of Asmodeus's inner circle, who had grown disillusioned with his methods. I can help you. I know Asmodeus's plans and weaknesses. But I need to know I can trust you. Millie stepped forward, her eyes filled with determination. We're fighting for what's right. We won't let Asmodeus destroy everything we care about. Azazel nodded, seemingly satisfied. Very well. I will join you and provide you with the information you need. But Azazel's insider knowledge, their efforts took on a new intensity. They learned about Asmodeus's strongholds, his key lieutenants, and the scope of his plans. It became clear that Asmodeus was planning a large-scale attack that could destabilize the entire pride ring. As they gathered more allies and refined their strategy, Naruto felt a sense of hope. 
they were building a formidable force, one that could stand against Asmodeus and protect their home. One evening, as they gathered to review their plans, Naruto stood before his friends and allies, his voice filled with conviction. We're almost there. We've gathered our allies, and we have the information we need. Now it's time to take the fight to Asmodeus. We can't let him win. Millie, Luna, and Octavia nodded in agreement, their resolve matching Naruto's. Azazel stepped forward, his eyes filled with determination. We have the element of surprise on our side. Let's use it wisely. With their plans in place and their allies ready, they prepared for the final confrontation. Naruto felt a sense of anticipation and determination. They were about to face their greatest challenge, but he knew they could succeed if they stood together. The days of preparation were a blur of activity and planning. Naruto, Millie, Luna, Octavia, and their growing band of allies, meticulously laid out their strategy. With Azazel's insider knowledge, they pinpointed Asmodeus's key operations and his primary stronghold, a fortress known as the Spire of Shadows. Their plan was to launch a coordinated attack, using the element of surprise to their advantage. The goal was to infiltrate the Spire, disable Asmodeus's defenses, and confront him directly. As the night of the ambush approached, the group gathered in a secluded area just outside the Spire's perimeter. The air was thick with tension and anticipation. Naruto addressed the assembled allies, his voice steady and determined. We've come a long way he began. We've gathered our strength and we've prepared for this moment. Asmodeus thinks he's untouchable, but tonight, we show him he's wrong. Stick to the plan, trust each other, and we'll make it through. Lily stepped forward, her usual bubbly demeanor replaced with a fierce resolve. Remember, we're not just fighting for ourselves. We're fighting for everyone who's been hurt by Asmodeus's schemes. Let's give him hell. Azazel, his face a mask of grim determination, nodded. The key is to move quickly and decisively. Once we're inside, we need to disable the main defenses. I lead a team to the control center while Naruto and Millie handle the front line. Luna and Octavia were tasked with leading smaller groups to create diversions, drawing Asmodeus's forces away from the main assault. With final checks and a chorus of affirmations, the group set off, moving silently through the shadows. As they approached the spire, Naruto's senses were on high alert. The fortress loomed above them, its dark towers piercing the night sky. The air was thick with foreboding, but Naruto pushed his fears aside. This was their moment. The initial phase of the plan went off without a hitch. Luna and Octavia's teams created distractions, luring guards and patrols away from their positions. Naruto and Millie led their group to the main gate, where they quickly dispatched the remaining guards and breached the entrance. Inside the spire, the atmosphere was even more oppressive. Dark, twisting corridors and ominous statues lined their path. Azazel guided them through the maze-like structure, his knowledge of the layout proving invaluable. As they neared the control center, they encountered heavier resistance. Asmodeus's elite guards, fierce and well-trained, engaged them in combat. Naruto's combat instincts took over, his movement swift and precise. Millie fraught with a ferocity that matched her fiery spirit, cutting through their enemies with deadly efficiency. Azazel and his team managed to reach the control center, where they began disabling the spire's defenses. Alarms blared, and the fortress was thrown into chaos. The element of surprise was slipping away, and they needed to act quickly. Naruto and Millie pushed forward, clearing a path to Asmodeus's inner sanctum. The final barrier stood before them. A massive reinforced door that protected Asmodeus's lair. With a nod to each other, they combined their strength to break through. The door shattered, revealing Asmodeus seated on a dark throne, a look of amusement on his face. So, you've come to challenge me he said, his voice dripping with disdain. I must admit, I'm impressed by your audacity. Naruto stepped forward, his fists clenched. This ends now, Asmodeus. We're not afraid of you. Asmodeus laughed, a chilling sound that echoed through the chamber. Foolish mortals. You have no idea what you're up against. With a wave of his hand, Asmodeus summoned a horde of demonic creatures, their eyes glowing with malevolent intent. Naruto and Millie braced themselves, ready to fight. The battle was fierce and relentless, but their resolve never wavered. Azazel and his team joined them, having successfully disabled the defenses. With their combined efforts, they managed to push back Asmodeus's forces, inching closer to the throne. Asmodeus's expression shifted from amusement to anger, his power surging as he prepared to unleash his full strength. Naruto felt a surge of energy within himself, his determination fueling his every move. He could see the same resolve in Millie, Luna, Octavia, and their allies. They were fighting not just for themselves, but for everyone who had suffered under Asmodeus's tyranny. As the battle raged on, Naruto saw an opening. He and Millie charged forward, their combined attack striking Asmodeus with a force that shook the chamber. The demon lord staggered, momentarily caught off guard. We've got him on the ropes. Millie shouted, her voice filled with hope. Naruto nodded, his eyes locked on Asmodeus. Let's finish this. 
but the final powerful strike, Naruto and Millie brought Asmodeus to his knees. The Demon Lord's defiance flickered for a moment before fading into resignation. You you may have won this battle he gasped. But this isn't over. Naruto stood over Asmodeus, his voice unwavering. It's over for you. You'll never hurt anyone again. But the Smadius defeated, the remaining demonic creatures retreated, and the Spire of Shadows fell silent. The battle was won, but the war was far from over. Naruto and his friends knew there would be more challenges ahead, but for now, they had achieved a significant victory. As they regrouped and tended to their wounds, Naruto felt a sense of pride and camaraderie. They had faced incredible odds and emerged victorious, united by their common cause. We did it Millie said, a tired but triumphant smile on her face. We actually did it. Naruto nodded, his heart filled with hope. And we'll keep fighting, no matter what. Together, we can overcome anything. The dawn broke over the pride ring, casting a pale light over the now silent spire of shadows. Naruto, Millie, Luna, Octavia, and their allies stood among the ruins of their recent battle, the weight of their victory mingled with the exhaustion of their efforts. Asmodeus had been defeated, but the cost of their triumph was evident in the bruises and injuries each of them bore. As Azul approached Naruto, his expression a mixture of relief and caution. We've won this battle, but Asmodeus's influence runs deep. His followers will scatter, but they won't disappear. We need to be prepared for any retaliation. Naruto nodded, understanding the gravity of their situation. You're right. We need to secure our position and make sure his remaining forces can't regroup. Millie, always the optimist, smiled despite the fatigue in her eyes. We've shown them that we're not afraid. If they come back, we'll be ready for them. The group spent the next few days reinforcing their defenses and tending to the wounded. The alliances they had forged were tested, but the shared experience of the battle strengthened their resolve and camaraderie. They knew that their fight against the remnants of Asmodeus's forces would require continued vigilance and cooperation. One evening, as they gathered around a makeshift campfire, Luna voiced a concern that had been on everyone's mind. We've dealt with Asmodeus, but what about the other rings? His influence extended far beyond the pride ring. We need to make sure his reach doesn't threaten other parts of hell. Octavia agreed, her gaze steady. We need to build a coalition, not just here, but across the rings. We can't do this alone. Naruto felt a familiar determination welling up inside him. Then that's what we'll do. We'll take our fight to the other rings, gather more allies, and make sure Asmodeus's legacy is completely eradicated. The next morning, they set out to visit neighboring rings, starting with the Gluttony Ring. It was a journey fraught with danger and uncertainty, but they were fueled by the knowledge that they had already accomplished the impossible by defeating Asmodeus. As they traveled, they encountered various groups and individuals who had been affected by Asmodeus's influence. Some were wary of joining their cause, but many were inspired by the tales of their victory and the promise of a better future. In the Gluttony Ring, they met with a group of rebels who had long opposed the ruling demon lords, but lacked the strength to make a significant impact. Naruto and his friends shared their story, offering their support and forming a crucial alliance. With each new ally, their coalition grew stronger. They devised strategies to dismantle the remaining pockets of Asmodeus's followers, coordinating attacks and providing support where needed. The battles were fierce, but their unity and determination saw them through each challenge. As they continued their journey, Naruto couldn't help but reflect on how far they had come. What had started as a mission to protect their home had grown into a larger crusade against tyranny and oppression. He looked at his friends Millie, Luna, Octavia, and Azazel and felt a deep sense of gratitude and pride. One night, as they camped under the stars, Millie turned to Naruto with a thoughtful expression. You know, we've been through so much together. I can't imagine doing this with anyone else. Naruto smiled, his heart swelling with warmth. We're a team. And no matter what comes our way, we'll face it together. Their journey continued, each step bringing them closer to their goal of a safer, more just hell. They knew that their fight was far from over, but they also knew that they had the strength and resolve to see it through. In the weeks and months that followed, their coalition grew into a formidable force, one that could challenge the old power structures and bring about real change. Naruto and his friends became symbols of hope and resistance, inspiring others to stand up against tyranny. As they prepared for their next mission, Naruto felt a deep sense of purpose and fulfillment. They had set out to protect their home, but in the process, they had ignited a movement that would reshape hell itself. And so, with their hearts full of determination and their bonds stronger than ever, they continued their journey, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The coalition had grown significantly since their initial victory over Asmodeus. Naruto, Millie, Luna, Octavia, Azazel, and their allies had become a beacon of hope across the rings of hell. They had formed alliances with various rebel groups, bringing together a diverse array of demons and other creatures who longed for change. Their next target was the Envy Ring, a place known for its treacherous politics and deeply entrenched power structures. 
The ruling demon lord, Leviathan, was known for his cunning and ruthless nature. Taking on Leviathan would be their most challenging task yet. The coalition gathered in a hidden base just outside the Envy Ring. Maps and plans were spread out before them as they discussed their strategy. Azazel took the lead, using his extensive knowledge of Hell's inner workings to guide their approach. We'll need to divide our forces Azazel began. Leviathan's power lies in his ability to manipulate and control others. We must disrupt his networks and weaken his influence before we can confront him directly. Naruto nodded, his mind focused on the task ahead. We'll need to move quickly and strike hard. If we can catch him off guard, we'll have a better chance of bringing him down. Millie, always the optimist, grinned. I say we give him a taste of what we did to Asmodeus. He won't know what hit him. Luna and Octavia, seated across the table, exchanged determined glances. We'll handle the diversions Luna said. Keep his forces spread thin and distracted. Octavia added, we'll need to be smart about this. Leviathan isn't a brute like Asmodeus, he's a schemer. We have to outthink him. But their plan in place, the coalition set out for the Envy Ring. The air was tense with anticipation as they moved through the shadowy corridors and narrow streets. The Envy Ring was a maze of deception and hidden dangers, but their resolve never wavered. As they infiltrated Leviathan's stronghold, they encountered numerous traps and ambushes. Naruto and his friends fought with a combination of skill and determination, their bond as a team strengthening with each challenge they overcame. The final confrontation with Leviathan took place in a grand hall adorned with opulent decorations and filled with eerie green light. Leviathan himself sat on a throne of serpents, his eyes gleaming with malicious intent. So, the heroes of the Pride Ring have come to challenge me Leviathan sneered. How quaint. Naruto stepped forward, his voice steady and resolute. We've come to end your reign of manipulation and fear. Your time is up, Leviathan. Leviathan laughed, a chilling sound that echoed through the hall. You think you can defeat me? I am the master of envy and deceit. You're nothing but pawns in my game. The battle that ensued was unlike any they had faced before. Leviathan's power to manipulate emotions and thoughts made him a formidable foe. He twisted their perceptions, causing them to doubt themselves and each other. But Naruto, Millie, Luna, Octavia and Azazel fought back with unwavering determination. They had faced their own fears and insecurities before, and they would not be defeated by them now. Drawing strength from their bond, they pushed through Leviathan's illusions and struck at his core. As the battle reached its climax, Naruto and Millie managed to break through Leviathan's defenses, delivering a final, decisive blow. The Demon Lord's facade crumbled, revealing the true depth of his fear and weakness. You you cannot defeat Envy Leviathan gasped as he fell to his knees. Naruto stood over him, his eyes filled with resolve. Envy only has power if we let it. We choose unity over division, and that's something you'll never understand. With Leviathan defeated, the Envy Ring began to change. The oppressive atmosphere lifted, replaced by a sense of hope and possibility. The coalition worked tirelessly to dismantle the remnants of Leviathan's control, helping the inhabitants of the Envy Ring rebuild and find their own paths. In the days that followed, Naruto and his friends reflected on their journey. They had faced incredible challenges and grown stronger with each victory. But they knew their work was far from over. As they stood on a hill overlooking the Envy Ring, Millie turned to Naruto with a thoughtful expression. We've come a long way, haven't we? Naruto nodded, a smile playing on his lips. And we've got a long way to go. But we're not alone. We've got each other, and we've got our allies. Together, we can make a difference. Luna, Octavia and Azazel joined them, each feeling the same sense of purpose and camaraderie. They had become more than a team, they were a family, united by their shared mission and their unbreakable bond. As the sun set, casting a warm glow over the landscape, Naruto felt a renewed sense of hope. They had faced the darkness and emerged stronger. And with their united strength, they would continue to fight for a better future for all of hell. The defeat of Leviathan had brought significant change to the Envy Ring. As the coalition worked to help rebuild and establish new leadership, Naruto, Millie, Luna, Octavia and Azazel took a moment to catch their breath. They had faced two formidable adversaries and emerged victorious, but the cost of their battles had left them weary. The coalition's headquarters, now a bustling hub of activity, was filled with both the sound of construction and the murmur of discussions about the future. Despite their success, the group knew that their work was far from over. The remaining demon lords still held power, and there were countless lives affected by the chaos they had wrought. Naruto stood in the center of the command room, surveying the scene. His gaze fell on Millie, who was deep in conversation with a group of newly freed rebels. Her infectious energy and determination had been a driving force throughout their campaign. Luna and Octavia were working on establishing communications with other rings. They were mapping out their next moves and identifying potential allies who could assist in their ongoing fight against tyranny. Their efforts were crucial to maintaining the momentum they had built. 
Azazel, ever the strategist, was reviewing intelligence reports and planning the coalition's next steps. His role was vital in ensuring that their victories led to lasting change. Despite their focus on the future, Naruto could sense a lingering fatigue among his friends. They had been through so much, and the weight of their responsibilities was beginning to show. He decided it was time for a much-needed break. Gathering the group, Naruto proposed a day of rest and reflection. We've been working non-stop, and it's clear we need a break. We've all been pushing ourselves hard, and it's important to take a moment to recover and recharge. Millie, though initially hesitant, agreed. You're right. We've accomplished a lot, but we can't keep going without taking care of ourselves. Luna and Octavia also saw the wisdom in Naruto's suggestion. A day off might be just what we need to clear our heads and strengthen our resolve, Luna said. The group spent the day exploring the Envy Ring's newly liberated areas. They visited places that had been oppressed under Leviathan's rule and interacted with the inhabitants, who were eager to express their gratitude and share their stories. Naruto and his friends found themselves in a small village nestled at the base of a mountain. The villagers had prepared a feast in their honor, a celebration of both their liberation and the new beginning they hoped for. As they sat around a table laden with food, Naruto reflected on their journey. The hardships they had faced had forged a deep bond between them, and he was grateful for the strength they drew from each other. Millie, with a plate piled high with delicious treats, beamed at her friends. You know, this feels like a well-deserved reward. We've earned it. Octavia, enjoying the rare moment of peace, nodded. It's important to remember that we're not just fighting for ourselves. We're fighting for everyone who's been affected by the chaos. Luna, leaning back in her chair, smiled. It's nice to see people happy again. We've made a difference, and it's moments like these that remind us why we fight. As the sun set, casting a golden hue over the village, Naruto felt a deep sense of fulfillment. The battles they had fought were not just about defeating powerful adversaries, they were about restoring hope and bringing positive change. The evening was filled with laughter, music, and storytelling. The villagers shared their hopes and dreams for the future, and Naruto and his friends found solace in their shared sense of purpose. When night fell, the group gathered around a fire, the crackling flames providing a warm and comforting glow. They spoke of their hopes for the future and the challenges that lay ahead, but for the first time in a long while, the conversation was light and filled with optimism. Azazel, who had been mostly reserved, joined in the conversation. We've done a lot, but we've also learned that even the smallest acts of kindness and support can make a huge difference. Naruto nodded in agreement. It's true. We've faced powerful foes, but our greatest strength lies in our unity and our compassion. That's what will carry us through. As the firelight danced across their faces, Naruto felt a renewed sense of hope. They had faced darkness and emerged victorious, but their journey was far from over. They would continue to fight for justice and rebuild what had been lost, but for now, they had earned a moment of peace. The next day, as they prepared to continue their mission, Naruto felt a deep sense of gratitude for his friends and allies. They had come together in the face of great adversity and had forged a path toward a brighter future. With their spirits rejuvenated and their bonds strengthened, they set out once more, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. They knew that their fight was far from over, but they were prepared to face it together, united by their shared purpose and the hope for a better tomorrow. The Coalition's efforts had transformed the Envy Ring, and the effects of their work were rippling through hell. With Leviathan's defeat, the power dynamics in the rings were shifting, and the inhabitants were beginning to reclaim their lives. As Naruto, Millie, Luna, Octavia, and Azazel continued their mission, their next goal was to solidify the changes they had fought for and ensure lasting peace. Their first step was to meet with representatives from the other rings. The coalition had established tentative alliances with various groups, and it was time to formalize these partnerships and create a united front against the remnants of the old power structures. The meeting took place in a neutral location a grand hall at the edge of the Envy Ring, designed to accommodate delegates from all corners of hell. The atmosphere was a mix of tension and anticipation, as representatives from the Wrath, Greed, and Sloth rings arrived. Naruto, standing alongside his team, felt a sense of nervous excitement. This was a pivotal moment, and the success of their mission depended on their ability to unite the disparate factions of Hell. The delegates began to take their seats, each one bringing their own unique presence to the gathering. The representative from the Wrath Ring was a towering, fiery figure named Reyes, known for his fierce temperament and uncompromising strength. The Greed Ring was represented by Lux, a suave and calculating demon who valued wealth and influence above all else. Finally, the Sloth Ring's delegate was Sombra, a lethargic yet shrewd figure who preferred manipulation to direct confrontation. As the meeting commenced, Azazel took the lead, addressing the assembly with a calm and authoritative tone. Thank you all for coming. We've gathered here to discuss the future of Hell and the role each of our rings will play in shaping it. Raze's eyes burned with intensity. We've seen what you're capable of. 
You've toppled powerful adversaries, but the question remains what do you intend to do with that power? Naruto stepped forward, his voice steady. We want to create a new order, one that values cooperation and justice over oppression and deceit. We've proven that we can work together to overcome our enemies. Now, we need to extend that cooperation to rebuilding and reforming hell. Lux raised an eyebrow, his expression skeptical. And what's in it for us? Why should we support this vision? Millie, always ready with a sharp retort, spoke up. Because it's the right thing to do. We've seen firsthand the damage caused by the old regime. We're offering a chance for a fresh start, where everyone has a voice and a stake in the future. Sombra, lounging comfortably in his seat, considered their words. Change is always a gamble. How can we be sure that this new order will be any different from what we've had before? Octavia, determined to make their case, addressed the concern. We're committed to transparency and fairness. We're not just asking you to take our word for it, we're inviting you to be a part of the process. Together, we can build a system that holds everyone accountable and ensures that no one is above the law. The discussion continued, with each delegate presenting their views and concerns. It was a heated debate, but Naruto and his team remained steadfast in their commitment to their vision. They answered questions, addressed objections, and worked to find common ground. As the meeting drew to a close, the atmosphere was one of cautious optimism. The representatives agreed to support the coalition's efforts, provided that certain conditions were met to ensure fair representation and oversight. But the agreement in place, Naruto and his allies began the process of implementing their vision for hell. They established a council composed of representatives from each ring, tasked with overseeing the transition to the new order. The council would be responsible for creating and enforcing laws, addressing grievances, and ensuring that power was distributed equitably. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of activity, as the coalition worked to put their plans into action. They met with various factions, organized public forums, and began the process of rebuilding infrastructure and institutions. Naruto, despite the overwhelming workload, felt a profound sense of accomplishment. They had come a long way from their initial struggle, and now they were on the brink of creating a lasting legacy. The challenges were far from over, but the progress they had made was a testament to their dedication and perseverance. One evening, as the sun set over the newly restored Envy Ring, Naruto and his team gathered to reflect on their journey. They stood on a balcony overlooking the bustling city below, the light of the setting sun casting a warm glow over their faces. Millie, looking out at the vibrant scene, smiled. We've done it. We've started something amazing. Luna nodded, her expression filled with pride. It's only the beginning, but it's a good start. We've shown that change is possible. Octavia, her gaze thoughtful, added, we've built something that can last. It won't be easy, but we've laid the foundation for a better future. Azazel, with a rare smile on his face, said, we've faced incredible challenges, but we've done it together. That's what makes us strong. Naruto looked at his friends, feeling a deep sense of gratitude. We've proven that even in the darkest places, there's always hope. We've made a difference, and we'll continue to fight for a better world. As the night fell and the stars appeared in the sky, Naruto and his team stood united, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. They had transformed hell from a place of fear and oppression into a realm of hope and possibility. And as they looked to the future, they knew that their journey was far from over, but they were ready to face it together, guided by their shared vision and unbreakable bond. So this part ends here. Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comments section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, bye bye.